Hello everyone, welcome back to PyLearning. In today's video, we are going to learn about building an AWS Lambda deployment package. Wait, but why do we need that? What happens is, when you are building a Python application, you are going to use a lot of Python libraries. However, not all the Python libraries are present in the AWS environment. Therefore, in order to run your code, you have to add those libraries as dependencies in your deployment package and then upload it as a zip file. For example, if your Python code uses the request library and if you go to the AWS Lambda console and do import request, it is not going to work. AWS Lambda is going to throw you an error. So in order to solve this problem, we have to build something called as an AWS deployment package. In this video, we are going to learn about three important things related to building an AWS deployment package. First, the AWS configuration settings. Second, building the deployment package itself. And third, how to schedule scroll jobs by using the AWS CloudWatch events. So let's get started. Once you have logged in to the AWS console, Go ahead to the Lambda function console. Here we have to create a new function. I am going to name my function pylenin request. Why? Because I want to experiment with the request library and I want my name of the function to be representative of what I am doing. In the runtime, I am going to choose Python 3.6. However, if you want to do it with Python 3.7, be my guest, you know, don't shy away. Don't use Python 2.7 because Python 2 is going to be deprecated very soon. So let's go ahead and choose Python 3.6. And now we have to talk about permissions. Now there are multiple ways in which you can set up permission for uh, continuing with AWS Lambda. Now remember, if you just want the most basic Lambda permissions, you can go ahead and choose this option, the first one. That way you will have the most basic Lambda permission and you will have access to Amazon CloudWatch logs and you can run a simple script from AWS Lambda. However, if you want your application to have access to other resources, like for example, S3 events or access to AWS API Gateway, SageMaker, Redshift, stuff like that, then you have to go ahead to the IAM console and create a policy for yourself. You have to attach all the relevant policies that will help you access all these applications in your Lambda function. And here you can go ahead and click on this option. Use an existing role and in this drop down you can choose the policy that you created. However, in this video, I'm not going to make it too complicated. We just want to experiment with how to deal with libraries that are not present in the AWS environment. So I'm just going to use the basic Lambda permissions. Let's go ahead and create our function. So after waiting some time, my Lambda function pylin in request has been successfully created. Now we can go ahead and experiment with our code. However, instead of writing code here, I'm going to upload a deployment package as a zip file. Let's go ahead and learn how to do it. Go to the code editor of your choice. Here you can see I'm using PyCharm. I have a directory called as AWS deployment package and inside it I have a Python script called as test.py. Now in the test.py, this is the code I've written. The smallest piece of code, easy to understand. All I'm doing here is I'm importing the request library. Then I have a function called as call pylenin and I'm making a get call to my own website, https www.pylenin.com. If the status code is equal to equal to 200, which means if the get call is successful, I'm returning a string called it was successful. Okay. Now, if I was to run this from here, from PyCharm on my local machine, how would I do it? I would do print call pylenin, right? And if I run this, it should work, right? It was successful. However, when we make it into a zip package, we create a deployment package and we upload it to AWS Lambda. How is Lambda going to know where to run the code? Where is the code? Where is the Python code that it should point to? In order to do that, we have to know something about something called as handler. Now, if I go back to the AWS console, here you can see something called as handler. All right. So basically in the handler, the default value is set to lambda function dot lambda handler. 
which basically means by uh, AWS Lambda is going to look into a file called Lambda function and then inside it, it is going to look into a function called as Lambda handler. It's basically similar to how you call libraries, you know, import request.get or import request.status code. In the similar fashion, this is how uh, AWS Lambda is going to access the code in your deployment package. So here you can see we have a file called test.py and we have a function called as call file in it. Therefore, we have to replace this in our handler in AWS Lambda. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, instead of Lambda function, we have to say test and our function is called as call file in So I have to replace this as call file in All right, now let's go ahead and save this. Okay, let's look at the next second important thing for the deployment package. What happens is, this is a simple piece of code that can run on your computer. However, in AWS Lambda environment, you need to pass in two parameters here. One is event and the other is context. Uh, these two uh, parameters inside the function are really uh, relevant because AWS Lambda sends uh, values through this, sends arguments through this parameter. We don't need to use them. Of course, you should use them when you are writing code in a production environment. They can be really useful. However, just for the sake of this uh, tutorial, we are going to set both of them to none. So we are not, uh, the default value has been set to none and we are not going to use these parameters in our code. Now, let's go ahead and create our deployment package. Go to any command line terminal. I'm using item here on Mac and you can see I'm already inside the folder where we have our test.py, right? So if I do ls, you can see the test.py. Now what we have to do is we have to pip install the request library inside this folder. See what happens when you do import request. When you do import request, Python looks for a request.py file in your uh, path, in the path where Python is stored, right? Like request is a library and then when you do pip install request, it installs request.py uh, well, all the files associated with the request library, which should have something called as request.py to the Python path. But in AWS environment, we don't have the request library. So we have to manually add the request library to our deployment package. In order to add request library to this folder, go ahead, pip3, install request minus t dot. Well, not minus t, dash t. This basically shows uh, that uh, download uh, the file to a particular folder. For that, you have to pass this argument dash t. And since I'm already inside the AWS deployment package, I'm doing dot here, which means that I want all the files to be installed in this folder. Now, if I press this, okay, so it was successful. And now when you come back to uh, PyCharm, you can see all the folders that are relevant for the request library have been installed to this folder. So great. The next step is creating the zip file. So here you can see these are the folders. Okay, let's go back to the folder destination again. Yeah, here. And now select everything inside this folder and then zip it. I'm using compress here. Uh, if you're using Windows, there must be something else. So now we have created an archive.zip file. Here you can see, and we have to upload it to our AWS Lambda environment. So go ahead here, choose upload a .zip file, then do upload, and then choose this archive.zip that we created just now. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and save it. Now, if it is a smaller file, less than 10 MB or something, you can still see the code in line. Here you can see the code already. These are the folders uh, that are required for the request library. And now if I press test, great. So this says it was successful. So that means now we are able to run our Python code with libraries that AWS AMI environment does not support uh, from AWS Lambda. Now this was just a test example that we used. We just wanted to see how we can use libraries in the AWS environment that are not already there and how we can use deployment packages to solve that issue. 
However, AWS Lambda have a much higher purpose. You can basically run your code anytime in any schedule expression you want without having to manually trigger it. It can trigger based on your Chrome job expressions, right? So let's say you want to trigger the code every four hours. So what you can do is you can have a Chrome expression and then AWS Lambda is automatically going to manage that. But how to add those Chrome expressions? Those you can add by the AWS CloudWatch events. So let's go ahead and set that up. Here, if you come to the beginning of the console and here you can see what are the triggers that you can add. So for example, here we want to add the CloudWatch events, right? And then we have to configure it. Let's go ahead to this page. Uh, this basically tells us how to uh, schedule expression uh, for the Amazon CloudWatch, uh, basically by using Chrome expression and rate expressions. If you go through these fields, if you're used to Chrome jobs, there are usually five fields. This Chrome in AWS Lambda has six fields. Don't worry, it's still very simple. Here you can see example Chrones that says, what if you want to run at 10 a.m. UTC every day? So this is the Chrome job that you would use. It runs every 10 minutes, Monday through Friday. This is the Chrome job you would use. So there are a lot of examples, don't worry about it. However, in our particular example, we want to say that we want to run our Lambda function every four hours. In that case, instead of using a Chrome, we can also use something called as rate. Right, so basically uh, you can see here that rate five minutes means it runs the lambda function every five minutes. Rate one hour means it runs the lambda function every one hour. In our case, we have to say rate four hours, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So here in the rules, uh, we are going to create a new rule. Let's say rule name crone four hours. You are not allowed any space in the rule name. See, it creates an error. So remember that. In the schedule expression, I can say rate and then say four hours. So basically now, go ahead and press add. Now it says new trigger one, unsaved changes. So save it here. Great. So now you have added this Chrome four hours and then it is automatically going to run your code every four hours. So friends, I hope this video was useful. If you liked the video, make sure to share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel for more such upcoming videos. In the next video, we are going to learn about a new feature that has been introduced by AWS, Layers. Thank you everyone and see you next time.